Hymn number 358, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. And what we can do with this, see, we can go back, like, we can go back 40 or 50 years, we can go back a generation and do the, uh, let's all stand and sing together hymn number 358, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. no one than this that one should lay down his life for his friends let's uh, pray our prayer of confession confident of the love of God God of love who created us and your love recreated us O oh God who redeemed us fill our spirits with your spirit O God, who first loved us, stir into flame the gifts crusted over and unused that lie hidden within us and set our hearts on fire with your love. Now hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Uh, that 
shouldn't be there the, the, for all that has been. That's a Jack Hammer's old quote from a different bulletin. So I think we should go straight to praising God from whom all blessings flow. Second Kings, really the whole chapter is about um, 
they start renovations on the um, old temple. And to their surprise, the carpenters doing work back in the back room find a copy of the law. And you realize just how far away these people had grown, that their scripture is lost completely and no one even misses it until some workman shows up and says, hey, look what I found. And they realize this is the law of the Lord and it, uh, it generates some changes as it always does and always will. The high priest Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And when Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, he read it, and then Shaphan the secretary came to the king and reported to the king, your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it in the hand of the workers who have oversight of the house of the Lord. Shep informed the king, and the priest, Elkiah, has given me a book. And Shaphan then read it aloud to the king, and when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. And that began uh, Josiah's uh, renewal and reform. And Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica, Second uh, Thessalonians 5:11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as indeed you are due. Now, this is the word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Now speak to us, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. Uh, as you know, I tend to talk a lot about encouragement. It's a big part of my life, a big part of my faith. And it's, I think, central to what we're about as the Church of Christ. You know, we're here to encourage one another and all the more as the day draws near. Therefore, encourage each other as you are doing and build each other up. He's, he's not just uh, reaching for arbitrary metaphors. He's talking about build, encourage, and build build people into mature disciples of Jesus Christ, into wholeness, grace, self-acceptance, love, peace, all those arbitrary nouns we kick around. They come from encouragement. And I figured it's, it's a mother's job, you know, to build these children, these little ones. So certainly talking about encouragement, we're talking about what mom does. Uh, shouldn't it? So I figured today, Mother's Day, an opportunity to talk about encouragement in the most concrete terms. I've got here uh, three letters from someone, uh, actually addressed to someone who did it, you know, who encouraged. That's all. J 
just did it. Just encouraged in concrete behavior day after day. Now we're going to let this teacher set up the story, okay? I've got to read to you a page or two to, um, to get our story together. So Connie says, I haven't seen Teddy Stallard since he was a student in my fifth grade class 15 years ago. Early in my career, I'd been teaching only two years. And from the day he stepped into my classroom, I disliked Teddy. Teachers are not supposed to have favorites in a class. Most especially, they're not supposed to show dislike for any student. But sometimes, There'll be one or two students to whom the teacher just can't seem to relate. And I thought of myself pretty capable of handling feelings like that until Teddy walked into my room. There wasn't a child I especially liked that year, but Teddy was most assuredly the one I disliked. I mean, he was dirty. You know, not just occasionally, but all the time. He often smelled. His physical faults were many, and his intellect left a lot to be desired. Also, by the end of the first week, I knew he was hopelessly behind, and he was going to repeat. And I began to withdraw from him. Now, any teacher worth her salt can channel work to the bright kids and keep them challenged while you put your major effort onto the slower kids who need the help. Any teacher can do that, but I didn't. In fact, I, I took a perverse pleasure in using my red pen, and each time I came to Teddy's paper, the cross marks, and there were many, were always a little larger and a little redder than necessary. Poor work, I would write with a flourish. <laughs> well, the days rolled by. We made it through the fall festival and Thanksgiving holidays, and I continued marking happily with my red pen. As the Christmas holidays approached, I knew Teddy would never catch up in time. And to justify myself, I went to his cumulative folder from time to time. He had very low grades for the first four years, but no failure. How he'd made it, I don't know. I closed my mind to the personal remarks. First grade, Teddy shows promise by work and attitude, but has a poor home situation. Second grade, Teddy could do better. Mother's terminally ill, and he receives little help at home. Uh, third grade, Teddy is a pleasant boy, helpful but too serious, slow learner. Mother passed away into the year. Fourth grade, very slow, well-behaved. Father shows no interest. Well, they passed him four times, but they won't pass fifth grade. It'll do him good, I said to myself. And then the last day before the holiday arrived, our little tree on the reading table sported paper and popcorn chains. And gifts were heaped underneath, waiting for the big moment. And teachers always get lots of presents at Christmas. Not a single student didn't bring me something. And each unwrapping brought squeals of delight, and the proud giver would receive <coughs> effusive thank yous. His gift wasn't the last one I picked up, and it was the middle of the pile. His wrapping was a brown paper bag, and he had colored Christmas trees and red bells all over it. 
It was stuck together with masking tape. For Miss Thompson, from Teddy, it read. The group was completely silent. And for the first time, I felt conspicuous, embarrassed because they all stood watching me unwrap the gift. As I removed the last bit of masking tape, two items fell on my desk, a gaudy rhinestone bracelet with stones missing and a small bottle of dime store cologne, half empty. I could hear the snickers and whispers and I wasn't sure I could look at Teddy. Isn't this lovely, I asked, placing the bracelet on my wrist. Teddy, would you help me fasten it? He smiled. Shyly, as he fixed the clasp, and I held up my wrists for all of them to admire. And there were a few hesitant oohs and ahs, but as I dabbed the cologne behind my ears, all the little girls lined up for a dab behind their ears. And I continued to uh, open gifts until I reached the bottom of the pile. When we ate our refreshments, the bell rang, the child kids filed out with shouts of see you next year and Merry Christmas. And Teddy waited at his desk. And when they all left, he walked up to me, clutching his gift and his books to his chest. And he said, you smell just like mom, he said. Her bracelet looks real pretty on you, too. I'm glad you liked it. He left quickly. I locked the door and sat down at my desk and made a New Year's resolution <laughs> to make up to Teddy what I had deliberately deprived him of, a teacher who cared. I stayed every afternoon with Teddy from the end of the Christmas holidays until the last day of school. And sometimes we worked together, sometimes he worked alone while I drew up lesson plans or graded papers. And slowly but surely, he caught up with the rest of the class. In fact, his final averages were among the highest in the class. And although I knew he'd be moving out of state when school was out, I wasn't worried about him. Teddy had reached a, lady, a level that would stand him in good stead the following year, no matter where he went. He had enjoyed a measure of success, and as we were taught in our teacher training courses, Success builds success. <laughs> so I didn't hear from Teddy until seven years later when uh, complete surprise when his first letter appeared in my mailbox. Dear Miss Thompson, I just wanted you to be the first to know I will be graduating second in my class next month. Very truly yours, Teddy Stout. I sent him a card of congratulations, a little package, a pen and pencil set. I wondered what he would do after high school. And then four years later, Teddy's second letter came. Now understand this is true. This is this isn't fiction. This is somebody making a difference in somebody else's life. This is a letter that a young man sat down and wrote to his fifth grade teacher. All it says is, Dear Miss Thompson, I wanted you to be the first to know. I was just informed that I'll be graduating first in my class. <laughs> the university has not been easy. But I liked it. Very truly yours, Teddy Stoward. So I sent him a good pair of sterling cufflinks and a card. So proud of him I could burst. And then today, <laughs> she says, today I got Teddy's third letter. I wanted you to be the first to know, Miss Thompson. As of today, I am Theodore Stoward, MD. <laughs> How about that? I'm going to be married on July 27th, and I wanted to ask you if you could come and sit where Mom would sit if she were here. 
I'll have no family there as dad died last year. Very truly yours, Teddy Stoward, MD. That's how this stuff works. All that is, is encouragement at work. Uh, what it comes down to, I think, is encourage each other. Encourage each other as you are doing. One of the most encouraging quotations that I carry around in my failing memory <laughs> is uh, a lot of people, this it seems is pretty close to the heart of encouragement too. A lot of people, a lot of people went a lot farther than they ever thought they could because someone else thought they could. I don't know, that just gets me. <laughs> a lot of people went a lot farther than they ever thought they could because someone else thought they could. Maybe that's a part of each of our journeys. Maybe that quote means something to us because we look back and know who it was that did that for you. And we look ahead and we know who we want to do it for. A lot of people went a lot farther than they ever <coughs> thought they could because someone else thought they could. Amen. And happy Mother's Day. <laughs>
also I've asked the um, announcement people to collect all the prayers as well. Did she miss any? Are we, are we all prayed up, good to go? <laughs> Let's pray. Great God of love, thank you for your presence here in our worship. Thank you for your creative presence, for your loving, nurturing, motherly presence in our lives. in our souls. In the places where we need a gentle, loving, motherly guidance for the healing of our own memories, we pray for our past and for the future we pray for ourselves and for mothers who will come and raise their little ones. We ask that uh, for this town, this church will be a vital light shining brightly and joyfully. And then we pray to be that light for the people in our lives that we love and care about and pray for now. Shine on, Lord Jesus. Shine through us. Shine within us. Shine like a city set on a hill. Shine, Lord Jesus, shine. As we pray the prayer you taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we do so our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
receive the benediction. <laughs> the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And unto him who is able to do far more abundantly than we ask or think in the church, even Christ Jesus, be all the glory now and forever. Amen.